Welcome! Universal Design, or UD, is a user-centered approach. The gist of UD is that all new environments and products, to the greatest extent possible, should be usable by everyone, regardless of their age, ability, or circumstance. Devoted advocate and visionary architect Ron Mace is the father of Universal Design. Over 20 years ago, at NC State University, he established what is now known as the internationally prominent Center for Universal Design. Universal Design benefits everyone, not just the 30 million or more individuals in the United States with disabilities or functional limitations. Please join us in viewing how the seven principles of Universal Design are reflected in the new School of Education building. First, the main entrance to the Curry Building was not accessible to all users because to enter, one had to ascend three flights of concrete stairs. Although a long ramp did allow access to the side entrance of the lower level of the building, it did not permit users who could not ascend them to enter the building through the main entrance. Second, the push switches in Ferguson were not useful to all users because they were located several feet from the door requiring visitors in wheelchairs or those who may have mobility limitations to push the button and then quickly move laterally towards the door. Third, the elevators in Ferguson were not usable to all. The small size of the elevators allowed for minimal user capacity. Only a few individuals could enter the elevator at one time. Also, the elevators were located some distance from the front entrance. Because they were tucked away from the main entrance, their location risked stigmatizing and segregating users. Fourth, the conventional light switches in Ferguson precluded the same means of use for all users by making it difficult for some to operate them. Also, in large buildings like Ferguson, some users may not be able to turn off the lights, contributing to unnecessary energy expenditures. The design of the new School of Education building has been greatly improved. Now the design and architecture are useful and marketable to users with diverse abilities. Take a look at the many examples we found that reflect this principle. All entrances to the new School of Education building provide identical or equivalent means of use for all visitors. Visitors in wheelchairs, for example, can enter or exit through any of the doors in a manner that does not segregate nor stigmatize them based on their needs. Also, the design of the new School of Education building is aesthetically appealing. The large glass windows and doors invite visitors to enter and use the building. The main entrance to the new School of Education building is located at ground level, eliminating the need for ramps and stairs. Curb cuts on Spring Garden and Sterling Streets allow easy access for visitors in wheelchairs or those who have functional mobility limitations. Wide curb cuts on Sterling Street and Spring Garden Street promote access for visitors using wheelchairs or those who have difficulty ascending or descending stairs. Four wide doors allow entry for all users, even during high traffic hours. Push switches are large enough to be noticed, but small enough to prevent stigmatization of users. Push switches are located directly next to the power door, maximizing ease of access. Long door pull handles allow use by users of any height. Horizontal door push bars run the width of the door, which allow users to exit using the arm or body, rather than the hand. A ground level entrance allows access to all from Sterling Street. Visitors using wheelchairs entering from Kenilworth Street can easily access the pre-function entrance by following a gentle slope around the stairs. A wide ramp with a gentle slope allows easy access for all users, including those in wheelchairs. The absence of stairs reduces the risk of user segregation or stigmatization. Parking spaces, including accessible spaces in open lots and in par the parking garage, are located in close proximity to the new School of Education building. Clearly marked crosswalks between designated parking spaces in the new School of Education building promote safety and security for all users, while curb cuts maximize physical accessibility. Dedicated parking spaces for individuals who have handicapped permits are located directly across Spring Garden and Sterling Streets, which places them in close physical proximity to the building. Elevators are located in the front of the new School of Education building and are large enough to accommodate many users at one time. Wide elevator doors allow access for all. Elevators are located near the main stairwell, reducing the risk of user segregation or stigmatization. 
Elevator buttons are located at a height accessible to all users. Braille font, located next to the elevator buttons, allow users who are blind or visually impaired to easily access the elevator. In the new SOE, bright lights ensure equitable use for all users, including those who are blind or those who have functional visual impairments. Classrooms and offices use natural light when possible, making the design appealing to users while simultaneously conserving energy. Motion-activated light switches eliminate the need for manual operation, which may be difficult for some users and also saves energy. When manual operation is required, lights are easily operated with a push button. The Curry and Ferguson buildings accommodated a much narrower range of individual preferences and abilities. For example, consider the drinking fountains. The small button on the left side is difficult for some users to operate. Also, a single drinking fountain may be too high for some users, including those using wheelchairs. The collaboration spaces in Ferguson provide another example. These spaces are located in a hallway with high traffic flow, discouraging users from taking advantage of the space for small group projects. Small tables and a lack of access to technology further discourage productivity. The design of the new School of Education building accommodates a wide range of individual preferences and abilities. As an extension of this principle, classrooms and workspaces in the new SOE building support a wide range of individual teaching and learning preferences while making the building attractive to diverse ability users. And that's not all. We found many other examples of adherence to UD Principle 2 in the new SOE building. Please consider the following. The overall design of the drinking fountains promotes ease of access for varied users. Drinking fountains are accessible for users of most heights and for users in wheelchairs. The large circular push button permits use with a closed fist or arm. The push button's central location on the water fountain also allows for right-handed or left-handed use. Classroom furniture and multimedia capabilities allow for high choice conditions and accommodate individual preferences. Instructors can arrange tables and chairs for lecture, discussion, and or small group work. Power and data ports at each table allow all users to power up electronic devices, including assistive technology, and to access the internet. The well-marked buttons and multimedia capabilities housed in the lectern allow users to access the internet, present information contained on a computer or thumb drive on a screen, present electronic audio or video files with closed captioning, or use an overhead projector from a single location. Collaboration spaces are designed strategically as areas where small groups of faculty, staff, and or students gather to work together. Collaboration spaces are amply lit to ensure access for all, including users who are blind or those with functional visual impairments. Located at the corner of a floor, collaboration spaces are surrounded by windows, allowing for plenty of natural light, an inviting comfortable atmosphere, and minimal disturbances. Collaboration spaces include rolling chairs that promote neutral body position and rolling tables that can be arranged to a variety of configurations. Couches promote casual conversation and create a welcoming environment. Collaboration spaces are also equipped with monitors, which allow users to share computer accessible information with others. Large tables are ideal for working on small group projects and sharing information with others. Smartboard technology in the computer labs provides an interactive way for all users to share and discuss information. The Sign Language Laboratory offers an alternative and complementary mode of instruction to those learning sign language. In the Sign Lab, SES Professions and Deafness students use a computer camera to electronically capture themselves signing. In addition to classroom instruction, the Sign Lab provides a flexible way for SES PID students to become proficient in sign language. In the old SOE, violations of simple and intuitive use were evident. For example, in Ferguson, the narrow window on the top half of the door prevents sight access for users who are small in stature as well as those using wheelchairs. In the new School of Education building, use is easy to understand regardless of any user's previous experience, knowledge, language skills, or education level. Consider the following examples. Restroom signage and layout ensure the design is easy to understand. By eliminating unnecessary complexity, 
the signage and layout promote greater ease of use by all. Restroom signs are marked with clear lettering and picture symbols. Braille allows users who are blind or functionally visually impaired to identify restrooms. Picture symbols promote understanding by users with limited or diverse language skills. The restroom entrances are wide enough to accommodate all users, including those who use wheelchairs. Doorless entry reduces the need for power doors and eases congestion during busy times. Restroom layout is easy to understand while also facilitating efficient traffic flow. A counter near the entrance allows users with large bags or materials to leave them away from the stalls and sink area and eliminating restroom congestion. The counter space also doubles as a changing table. Because the counter space is available in both men's and women's restrooms, it allows for equitable gender access. A full-length door side light allows users of varying statures to see inside and outside an office, which eliminates disadvantages and stigmas experienced by any specific group. The design of the old SOE had more than a few flaws that made essential information difficult to perceive by diverse ability users. One basic example is found in the use of traditional chalkboards. White or yellow chalk on a brown chalkboard is more difficult for students to read and can stigmatize users who have functional visual impairments. The design of the new School of Education building communicates important information effectively to all users, regardless of ambient conditions or the visitor's sensory abilities. Here are a few examples. Dual sensory alarms provide audible and visual warning signals. High and contrast letters are easy for users to see. Dual sensory alarms ensure safety for users who are deaf, hard of hearing, blind, or have functional visual impairments. Red letters on a white background indicating the purpose of the alarm ensures safety and clarity for users. Maximum color contrast on signs in braille font maximize legibility of essential information. White lettering in all capital letters on a dark background provides maximum contrast between the information and the surrounding area. Braille allows users who are blind to read the signs. Color-coded floor diagrams maximize legibility of essential information about building layout for all users. A large presentation screen allows instructors to present information in a clear and legible manner. Multiple whiteboards placed on several walls within a classroom provide greater visual contrast than chalkboards, allowing users with functional visual impairments to most easily see written information during class time. The Myconic Elevator System is evidenced by the audible, visual, and tactile information provided to users. Going down. Please stand clear of the closing door. In addition to the usual beeps indicating floors, the elevators talk, announcing not only the direction the elevator is moving, but also each floor upon arrival, ensuring that individuals with functional visual impairments, as well as all users in crowded elevators, know their location. This is an example not only of providing different modes for a redundant presentation of essential information, but also of a destination-oriented elevator system. In the old SOE, there were several obvious design hazards. For instance, the concrete stairs and dim lighting increased the likelihood of accidents occurring in stairwells. Also, chairs and tables placed in the hallway disrupt traffic flow and can result in tripping or bumping. By contrast, the design of the new School of Education building minimizes hazards and adverse consequences of accidental or unintended actions. Consider these examples. Textured flooring on stair steps and bright lighting in stairwells minimizes the risk of slipping. Rubber texture bumps on the stair flooring discourage unconscious action that could result in a slip and fall accident. Ample electric and natural light in the stairwells also helps to prevent slip and fall accidents. Of course, not even the design of the new SOE building is perfect. As you can see, we found one non-example. This long step with minimal color contrast between the stair and the floor has caused some users to trip. Hallway design minimizes the risk of users bumping into each other or tripping over hazards. Hallway benches built into the wall encourage users to converse without disrupting traffic flow. The design of the former SOE did not always allow for low physical effort. Here are several examples. 
These door handles require thumb operation and fine motor force, which may fatigue some users. These manually operated faucets also require fine motor skills and dexterity to operate, which may fatigue some users. The small lever used to operate the paper towel dispenser requires operating force, repetitive action, and fine motor skills that may pose difficulty and result in fatigue for some users. The height of the toilet flushing lever requires users to exert physical force and effort. Also, while the height of the lever may be convenient for some users, it may fatigue others who have to struggle to reach it. Although the tables and chairs are conducive to creating differing instructional arrangements, moving furniture requires users to exert significant operating force and sustained physical effort, which may result in fatigue for some. By comparison, the design of the new School of Education building allows diverse ability users efficient and comfortable access with minimal fatigue. Consider these examples. The overall design of the door handles minimizes physical effort and repetitive action. Unlike knobs, the door levers do not require users to exert hand strength or to engage in a twisting wrist motion. Door levers can be operated with a closed fist or elbow. Push bars on doors minimize the need for users to exert hand strength or to engage in a twisting wrist motion. Doors can be pushed open with minimal physical effort by the user's hand or body. Automatically controlled, motion-sensitive faucets, towel dispensers, and toilets decrease the physical effort and repetitive action required when operating restroom devices. Also, the doorless entryway minimizes the force users need to exert when entering or exiting the restroom. Motion-controlled faucets eliminate the need for manual operation, conserve water, and reduce surface contamination. Motion-controlled towel dispensers reduce repetitive actions and minimize physical effort. These automatic dispensers also discourage excess paper towel use and reduce surface contamination. Automatic flush toilets eliminate the need for manual operation and repetitive user action. These automatic controls also decrease surface contamination. Doorless restroom entry eliminates the need for users to exert physical force required to open a door. An open entryway facilitates smooth traffic flow while also reducing surface contamination. Wheels installed on tables and chairs minimize physical force users are required to exert when rearranging classroom furniture. Rolling tables and chairs reduce the sustained physical effort needed to rearrange seating. Classroom chairs allow users to sit in a neutral position. Window shades are power operated to minimize physical effort, eliminating the need for repetitive action when opening and closing blinds. Chairs in the conference room are fully adjustable and allow users to sit in a neutral body position, which maximizes comfort and minimizes sustained physical effort. The light touch keyboard reduces sustained effort and required force of repetitive action. Fully adjustable chairs allow users to sit in a neutral body position, minimizing the risk of computer-related injuries and strains. In the former SOE, there are several examples in which the size and space for approach was inappropriate. For instance, in the graduate assistant work areas, although the space is open, the placement of tables and chairs decreases the amount of usable size and space, which likely contributes to a decline in productivity. The design of the new School of Education building provides appropriate size and space for approach, reach, manipulation, and use regardless of user's body size, posture, and mobility. Here are a few examples. The main lobby is large, spacious, and allows for plenty of natural lighting. This area can accommodate users of diverse abilities. Also, the elevator, stairs, and display screen are on user's clear line of sight upon entering the main entrance of the building. Doors are wide enough to accommodate all visitors, including users who use wheelchairs, those with functional limitations, and those carrying large items or packages. Restroom design is spacious and allows users of all sizes, statures, and mobility levels to access facilities easily. The sink height is accessible for most users, including those who use wheelchairs. Also, the universal sink height reduces stigmatization by eliminating the need for a dedicated accessible sink. The accessible restroom stall is large enough for an individual using a wheelchair to maneuver easily, without hitting walls or the stall door. Bars near the toilet are positioned at an appropriate height to assist users in wheelchairs or with other functional physical limitations. 
Hallways are wide enough to reduce congestion during peak traffic times and allow individuals who use wheelchairs as well as those with functional physical limitations to travel with greater ease through the building. Universal design matters to everyone. We are all only temporarily abled. If not now, in the future, UD will hold some personal relevance. We are fortunate. The new School of Education building re reflects all seven universal design principles. Although the new building is only a few blocks away from the old one, there is no question we have come a long way in ensuring educational access and inclusion for users with diverse abilities. But we cannot afford to stop here. Now we must look forward and press on with unified advocacy efforts that advance universal design for learning. Taking these steps forward together as researchers, leaders, teachers, and advocates will help promote cognitive access and inclusion for all. Thank you for sharing your time with us this evening.